I'm excited because we're gonna be focusing today on the feast called Sukkot in Hebrew. Many of you know it as the Feast of Tabernacles. What's interesting is that the Hebrew prophet Zechariah told us that during the millennial age, when Messiah is reigning on earth for a thousand years, everybody that's on the planet that knows him, Jew and Gentile alike, will celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. This is an exciting time. It's a time of celebration. We started out the fall holy season with Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, the Feast of the Blowing of the Trumpets. This is a time of self-examination that announces that the kingdom of God is breaking into the earth, and if there's known sin in our life, it's time to repent. Moving forward from Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, we move towards and into the day known as Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. During the Day of Atonement, as Messianic believers, Jew and Gentile alike, we celebrate that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us of our sin. And now as we approach this final fall holy day, Sukkot, it's a time of just rejoicing and thanking God for everything that he's done for us. The Lord told the children of Israel to gather the goodness and the bounty of the land and to wave it before him in something called a lulav. And basically what they were doing is they were acknowledging the creator for all the good gifts that he had brought into their life. It's a time that we're commanded to rejoice and celebrate for all the good things that the Lord has done for us. So let's go now to the book of Leviticus. We're picking up in the 23rd chapter. I'm gonna begin reading today in verse number 39. On exactly the 15th day of the seventh month, again, this is the month of Tishrei, when you have gathered in the crops of the land, and so again, it's a time where they've gathered in the fall harvest and they're thanking God for his goodness, for the harvest and for every blessing. You shall celebrate, I'm gonna be zeroing in on that today. You shall celebrate the feast of the Lord for seven days. Now look at the 40th verse. Now on the first day, you shall take for yourselves the foliage of beautiful trees, palm branches, boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook, and you shall, get this word now, rejoice before the Lord for seven days, and the next verse, and thus celebrate it as a feast to the Lord. It shall be a perpetual statute. So I want you to think about three things. It was a time of harvest, a time of ingathering. It was a time of thanksgiving, recognizing that the harvest that they had came from the Lord. He's the one that provided the rain. He's the one that put the seeds in the ground with the genius in them that allowed them to spring forth from the ground to create plants that could be eaten and enjoyed. It's a time that they not only celebrated the harvest, but they celebrated all the good things that had come into their life. Thus, they took the species of the land, bound them together in the lulav, and they waved the lulav before the Lord in every direction and up and down acknowledging that the creator is the one that gives us every good thing that we enjoy. The ability to taste food, the air that we breathe, the pleasant relationships that we have, the ability to touch, that he's given us ears to hear, a tongue to taste, eyes to see, a brain to think, the capacity to love, and the incredible ability that you and I have as human beings to have a moral consciousness of right and wrong. So it's a time to be thankful for everything that God has done, including and first creating us and giving us life. The Feast of Tabernacles reminds us that the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years on their way to the Promised Land out of Egypt into the promised land, in the wilderness for 40 years, they lived in booze. So part of what happens during the Feast of Tabernacles is that every uh, Jewish person that's, uh, that's observant will build a sukkah, a temporary tabernacle, to remind them of the time that they lived in booze while they were in the wilderness. So I'm looking now at the 42nd verse. The Lord says, you shall live in booze for seven days 
All the native born in Israel shall live in booze so that your generations may know that I, the sons of Israel, live in booze when I brought them out from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. And so I want you to consider that the Lord wants us during the Feast of Tabernacles as Jews, I'm Jewish myself, he wants us to remember our past, what he did for us, that he had us living in these temporary structures, Sukkot, individually a sukkah, plural Sukkot, 40 years in the wilderness. And what we're reminded of is during that time, beloved ones, we had nothing but God to depend on. God brought uh, uh, he brought uh, supernatural bread uh, from the, uh, on the earth every day, uh, six days a week for 40 years. Supernatural manna, six days a week he provided for Israel. They depended on him totally for their food. He brought the quail at night. He brought the water out of a rock. It taught them to depend on God alone. And my gosh, there's a lesson there for you and I every day about that, that God wants to strip us of relying on every other thing but him alone. Nothing else will satisfy him. The Lord's purpose in our life will be finished. He's stripping us so that we come to the place that we have learned how to depend and rely on him alone. And that's why he had the children of Israel in the wilderness. In fact, when we go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter eight, the Lord spelled it out. You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, that he might humble you, testing you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and let you be hungry, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand, beloved one, that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Why did God have them in the wilderness? To strip them that they would learn how to depend on him alone. Thus you are to know in your heart that the Lord your God was disciplining you, stripping them, just as a man disciplines his son. Verse seven, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing with valleys and hills. In other words, that in order for God to bring them into the blessing, he first had to strip them down. God continues in the 10th verse, when you have eaten and are satisfied after they're stripped and blessed, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Then the Lord cautions them, do not forget what I've done for you. In verse 15, he led you through the great terrible wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. He brought water for you out of the rock. In the wilderness, he fed you manna. And then he says, you need to remember this, that he was doing it to humble you and test you. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. And then the Lord once again cautions them, don't ever forget. And so as we close today, I want to remind you, continually rejoice. Always be thankful. And when you do face hardship, when you are going through the wilderness, know, number one, that the Lord is with you in that wilderness. It's not for naught. He's with you in the wilderness. Because every day for 40 years, 14,000 nights the Israelites spent in the wilderness. And for 14,000 nights, 40 years, they saw the literal manifest glory and presence of God over the tabernacle manifesting as a divine fire. So for 40 years in the wilderness, when they were surrounded by the serpents and it was so difficult, the presence of the Lord was visibly evident to them right in the midst, a pillar of fire at night and a glory cloud hovered over the tabernacle by day. So once again, rejoice continually. When you are in the midst of a trial, know that God is with you in the midst of your wilderness, just as he was with Israel. And then finally understand that when you're in a trial, continue to rejoice because the reason God brings us through trials is because he wants to fully bless us and we're not able to receive the blessing and he's not able to fully pour it out until we're ready until the cup is open, right? You can't, pour, you can't pour any liquid into a cup that's already full. So God's got to strip us of every other dependency. He's got to humble us. He's got to get all pride out so he can fully bless us with every good thing he's done. 
And then finally today, the Lord ends this by warning Israel, don't ever forget that you're blessed because I'm blessing you. So I want to encourage you today, don't take anything for granted. Don't take your wife for granted. Don't take your husband for granted. Don't take your house or apartment for granted. Don't take the fact that you can hear for granted, that you've got a right mind for granted. Take nothing for granted. Instead, practice an attitude of thankfulness and gratitude. Be joyful and give him praise. This is Rabbi Schneider, beloved. I love you. In Deuteronomy 16, we read about how the Lord commanded all of Israel to come to Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles and to present to him a special Thanksgiving offering there. And each man was commanded to give as he was able. I just want to encourage you, beloved one, if you really want to enter into the spirit of the Feast of Tabernacles, we've got to first of all think about honoring Hashem, honoring the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ with a financial offering. Because it's a way of giving back to Him. It's a way of showing Him that we love Him, appreciate Him, and honor Him, and acknowledge Him for all the good that has come into our lives. So I just want to encourage you today that if God is using discovering the Jewish Jesus to bless you, to consider presenting your special offering to Father God during this time of year through this ministry. Beloved, it's a joy to give and knowing that it always comes back to us, pressed down, good measure running into our lap, what an exclamation mark on it.